Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be doing a complete portfolio review of my portfolio. We're going to be covering my portfolio, revealing it once again. I know we did reveal it not too long ago, but the big difference is this one is the platform that I'm doing it on. I found a platform to do my portfolio videos on, and I'm going to be consistently updating my portfolio on this platform to better track my performance dividend income update you guys on any moves i'm going to make on my portfolio what i'm planning to make and what i do every month so this is a little uh in on november 14th i'm making this video I'm going to post on november 14th but from now on you should expect these videos in the first week of every month right so in december you're going to get in the first week of december you're going to get a portfolio update video and so on and so forth one every month uh the first week i'm going to update you guys on moves dividend income all that good stuff but for now, we're covering it right now, right? Where we have my full portfolio here, my gains, my losses, all my positions. And right now, my largest holding is Apple. And I completely feel comfortable with Apple. Just going over my portfolio, I've already said that Apple is a company that I probably have one of my strongest theses in. I think it's... Um, a company with a wide competitive advantage over the market and i bought it last year at about 144 right per share and i think it was a steal of a buy this company's up 29 percent a year to date for me uh, about 30 percent in gains and about 430 dollars in gains right so this company's done very well for me the next company we have is disney which has got a lot of turmoil but as the company's been cheaper and cheaper i've been buying more and more shares now the plan for this company is that is going to announce a dividend so if it does do that that will be great but even if it doesn't i'm still comfortable holding this company long term now for this holding specifically i actually do plan to trim it soon once the share price gets over a hundred dollars a share i'd probably be comfortable trimming about four or five shares as i do believe this is a little bit too large of a holding it's not too high conviction for me to have it this large a holding same thing with CVS, right? CVS is another company. I'm down about 4% on the current position. I still think it's a super undervalued company, but once the share price passes to about $75 a share, I'm going to probably trim this one about maybe 10 or eight shares of the current share price because I do not want this one at such large at allocation of my portfolio, but I still love CVS. I think long-term it's going to do great. And if you look at their free cash flow and revenue growth, it's also great. They're the leader in pharma in pharma retail. They're the leader in healthcare. They recently bought the healthcare planning business, Aetna. And so I'm still very bullish on CVS. No downsides there. Just plan to trim the position. Now, Microsoft is the opposite. This is one that I want to add more to this is a company that i absolutely love it's my biggest gainer year to date up 50 percent on my microsoft position um year to date this company is absolutely great about 500 dollars in gains on this one and i did trim this one at 365 a little bit longer ago and now i wish i didn't trim this one is now the share price is at 370. i don't plan to trim microsoft unless the share price gets way too high or the valuation is way too ridiculous for me as i still love this company and it's going to be one of the major holdings in my portfolio for the long term the next company i have is taiwan semiconductor this is one that i continue to plan to hold as i hold apple i'm going to hold taiwan semiconductor because i believe uh, that taiwan semiconductor is the leader in the chip industry if you look at their financials they're great and they're not they're the number one customer for apple and this company is in my opinion one of the best companies right i think it's going to continue to do very very well warren buffett bought it in this one but out of it uh due to the geopolitical issues i stayed in it i bought it originally at 81 dollars a share and right now it's trading at about 98 dollars a share next we have probably one of my most controversial holdings which is crocs many people have criticized me for holding this company but this is a company i bought originally about 93 dollars a share i bought a little bit more to lower my cost basis but i think this company is extremely undervalued even at 85 dollars a share if you look at their financials they have been good but the reason they dipped even further was because of a bad earnings report their uh new acquisition hey dude has had slower growth than they expected even though they beat on both earnings they lowered guidance for hey dude and for the overall company by about one percent on revenues now i'm down about eight percent on this holding this holding actually went up ten percent today so i would be down about 18 percent on the holding but i still like crocs long term right I, I like this company many people say it does not have a competitive advantage but i believe it does with this unique design i haven't met one person who doesn't love the design and the look of crocs so i'm going to continue to hold this company for the long term 
And this is probably one of the few that doesn't have a dividend or doesn't have a plan to institute a dividend in my company. But being as young as I am, I think I'm okay to have more risk and a bit more growth in companies like Crocs. Next, we're going to go over Texas Roadhouse, which is my restaurant company. I don't want to hold too many restaurant companies because I do not like most of them. But Texas Roadhouse is one I do like a lot. This company, um, in terms of restaurant style, it's unique, right? It's a steakhouse, but it's the only steakhouse where you can get a cheap steak and a great experience for a certain price. And they're going to continue to provide that great value. And I think this company is absolutely great. It does pay a dividend and it has about no debt on its balance sheet and it's growing free cash flows extremely quickly with solid return on capital employed. So this is one company that I love and I will continue to hold, probably not trimming here. Same thing with Beachy. Love the company. One of my favorite real estate investment trusts. Real estate in general has been struggling, so I'm down on both my real estate positions, but I plan to hold this one for the long term. I think it's an absolutely great company. And with some of the most iconic properties in the world, I think they're going to continue to do well with 100% tenant payout rate. Same thing with realty income, about a 98% tenant payout rate, but this is one I also plan to hold uh, for the long term. The only monthly dividend company in my portfolio. I think it's going to continue to pay dividends, obviously, every month, continue to grow these dividends, and in the past, it's had great performance. This is actually my biggest loser year to date, but I'm comfortable with that as it's only been due to macroeconomic environments and at interest rates. I originally bought this company at around $60 a share, and I've been dripping my positions. As you can see, I have 1.83 shares of realty income dripped. And the last holding is S&P Global which is my smallest holding, and I didn't want it to be my smallest holding. I actually want it to be one of my top five holdings, but I originally bought this company at 349 and the company had earnings and then exploded up right after, as I'm already up 15% of this position. So I didn't get a chance to buy any more shares at the valuation that I wanted to, but S&P Global is one of the best companies that I probably have in my portfolio. If I ever see it dip under 360, 370 again, I will be picking up some more shares of S&P Global. As I do absolutely love the company, the consecutive years of dividend growth, the free cash flow growth, and even though the dividend yield is not too high, I'm not concerned about S&P Global at all. So those are the companies. I'm probably going to be some companies that are on my watch list that I'm maybe looking to add are like PepsiCo, Visa MasterCard, uh, T. Rowe Price Group, Altria Group, Coca-Cola. If I see some of those at good valuations or Kroger, different ones that then I will definitely buy into those and add them as long-term holdings. I don't want to have too much holdings because I like to keep track of all my holdings. I don't like to have uh, holdings that I don't keep track of and don't know what's going on with the actual company. If we go to the diversification tab, we could see that across, in terms of sectors, I have most of my company, uh, most of my portfolio in technology with $4,800 allocated to technology. Next is consumer cyclical. Then there's real estate. Uh, communication services, healthcare, and financial services. I want to build up my financial services position as I believe it's too small. I should be able to do that with S&P Global. And when I start in position in Visa, I should be able to do it with Visa as well. My projected income so far for this year is about $280. So solid annual income, quarterly income of $70, a monthly income of $23, a daily income of $0.77 cents and an hourly income of $0.03 cents per hour for doing pretty much nothing. So that's actually uh, very nice. If we look at our dividend insights, uh, we could see our total annual income for each position. My current portfolio has a dividend yield of about 2% and a yield on cost of about 2.05%. So the snowball effect has had 0.06% effect on my portfolio so far. Uh, this company, I mean, I have just started this portfolio not too long ago, just this year. And the reason for the not too long history is because I actually recently transferred my portfolio over to Fidelity. So I only have about three months of history, but it is okay as I'm going to continue to add the history and it's going to be continued updated on dividend data. By the way, if you guys would like to use dividend data and like to use any of the research tools or the portfolio tools that you're seeing in my video, you can go down below and click my affiliate link. It helps me out, helps you out. And you can try dividend data two weeks for free as there is a free trial. Next, we have some uh, dividend history that I'm going to go over. Total earned dividends so far. In the last four months, we have uh, total earned dividends of $67.92. Uh, back, we earned $6.44 in August, $18.01 in September, $28.34 in October. And so far, we only received the dividend payout from CVS, which is $15.32 so far in November. 
And that is it for the portfolio reveal, right, guys? Uh, I This is my portfolio. I'm going to update you guys on what I do with my portfolio. Probably going to trim Disney and CVS soon, but I've been buying as they've been undervalued. I'm going to update you guys every month, the first week of the month, on what I buy, what I sold. And you're going to see my portfolio updates in real time. So if you do enjoy that, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.